let's get started so welcome you all to the live session 12 here we will be solving some of the uh, some of the problems based on the all the weeks of the course so this may be important for your examination so let's get started so this is the first problem first of all please try it by yourself after that we will discuss it together okay so please uh, try first of all by yourself you can give your response in the chat box Okay, so I got response from Abhay. So Rohit, uh, I am waiting for you. So you can give your response in the chat box. After that, uh, I will discuss it. Okay, so let's uh, try to discuss it with together. So here, uh, the problem is which of the following is not true for the bonding of solid. So this question is um, from the course um, course video lecture of the week one. So here it has been asked about the nature of forces between two. Uh, two atoms of uh, solid which are bonded okay so hello Nagas Srinivas so you can take one minute time to first of all try it by yourself we are discussing here the solution of the problem number one so you can take one more minute to give your response i will wait for one more minute okay okay sir okay i mean in this session we are solving some problems throughout the course so this is the first problem please first of all try it by yourself and you can give your response in the chat box after that we will discuss it together okay okay so now i have got response from everyone so now i will start discussing the solution So, yes, here this problem is all about the which of the following is not true. Here it has been asked for the no, not true, okay? Yes, Rohit? Okay. So, this problem here it has been asking for not true statement for the bonding of solids. So, as I told uh, in my very first lecture, For if in any solids, it is it is made up of lot of atoms. Okay. Okay. So they are made up of lot of atoms, and there are lot of force which are acting between the two atoms. Suppose if we have. Uh, if we have two atoms free in the space like here and here they would be made up of nucleus 
nucleus is positive charge and it is surrounded by electrons they are negative charge and there will be force between a repulsive there will be force between the, these two nucleus it is positive charge electrons are negative charge so electrons of suppose this is atom one this is atom two so the there will be force between the nucleus of two atoms there will be force between the electrons of all atom two to the nucleus of the atom one as well as there will be the forces which will be acting between the electrons of the atom one and the nucleus of the atom two so this the magnitude of force depends on the how much distance between them and based on uh, so based on the distance the nature of force changes as well as the magnitude so there is a plot it is a force versus distance plot and this is the plot for the repulsive force and this is the plot for the attractive force and if you see the total force then it is the sum of attractive plus repulsive force and its nature is little different it is somewhat like this so this is the total force so if we keep on increasing the decreasing the distance between two atoms then both forces attractive as well as the repulsive both increase in the magnitude you can see here this is attractive this is repulsive but when we add these forces then nature is changing so if this distance is called r0 where the net force is zero so when atoms are bonded together at that time equilibrium distance where atoms don't uh, don't find any net force that distance is called the equilibrium distance and that is denoted by r0 and if distance between two atoms r is greater than r0 then net force will be attractive in nature and if if distance between two atom is less than r0 sorry i am writing opposite you can see here here in the plot this is the r here it is r0 if you see net force plot so if distance is less than r0 then then the total force is positive positive means repulsion so here it is repulsion and here the force which are negative in nature that those are attractive in nature so we can see here if distance between two atoms is greater than r0 that means this reason then we have repulsion uh, sorry attraction because here we can see the curve is in negative region and if this distance is less than r0 then there is a repulsion okay that is that reason okay here it is a repulsive zone 
yes the correct answer is d so if we now if we start looking the statements repulsive forces increases with decrease in distance between two atoms yes it is correct so here we can see repulsive forces increasing on decreasing distance similarly repulsive force results between two nuclei yes it is correct because both nuclei are positive charge and positive charge will repel each other so this is also correct this is also correct now coming to the option c attractive force increases with decreasing distance between two atoms it is also correct here we can see distance is decreasing but repulsive forces attractive forces increasing so only option is which is wrong which is the statement is wrong total force always increases with decreasing distance between two atoms so we have seen the nature of total forces keep on changing it is not always increasing so correct option is d okay okay if there is any confusion please ask me otherwise we will move to the next problem okay i think there is no confusion so let's move to the next problem please read the problem and you can keep your response in the chat box Okay, I have got response from Abhay. I am waiting for others. Okay, yes, here everybody is telling option B. It means curve two. So we know what is the toughness. Toughness is nothing but area under the stress strain curve. So here it is stress. It is strain. Stress strain curve, or we can say energy energy absorbed by the material by the material before fracture. So if you see area under the stress strain curve that gives the energy absorbed by per unit volume of the material so here visually you can see the area under the green curve it is it's it is looking larger in comparison to the others yes based on this argument uh, you can say the material 2 is the toughest material so suppose uh, I am giving a situation such that uh, I have drawn another curve something like this okay it is such that now the new area which I have drawn orange one as well as the green one if they are the same then according to you which of the following whether this material 2 or new material which I have writing down 4 which one will be the toughest material the condition is area under the both curve is equal then then which which should be the toughest material Yes, you can give your response in the chat box. You can write either two or four. Okay, according to Abhay, it's four. Rohit, two. Okay, so 
uh, let me give you the answer in that case the material two it will be the toughest material because toughness is toughness is a combination of toughness the tough material should be should have high strength as well as it should have high ductility ductility should be higher because it should absorb little more energy before the failure but material should have high strength it is not like we are taking any polymer and which have, which can be stressed to a large value suppose this is the polymer and it can stress up to here then it will be a tougher material do you think it will be tougher material no it should be plastic material so in toughness suppose if in case of situation which i have told if both material should have uh, having the same area then is the material which having higher strength that will be the more tougher okay okay so but as far as this question is concerned the correct answer was two clear shall we move to the next problem okay so if there is no confusion can we move ahead okay abhay yeah what i was telling that when we call a material is tougher a material is called tougher it when it it will absorb a larger amount of energy okay as well as the material should have higher strength also so if we just stick to the definition of the energy absorbed or the area under the stress strain curve then there may be situation which i told like this okay we suppose we have took a polymer material okay so let's say rubber band okay now we if we stretch the polymer then the area under stress strain curve it will also be higher but if you see its strength strength is very very small okay although it it has ability to deform plastically very very high but the strength which it has it is lower you can see this value okay here whereas we have some metallic material which which have a moderate ductility but it has higher strength something here and area under curve both is equal in that case the material which is having higher strength that will call the tougher material okay now it's clear so in that case this two is the tougher material now it's clear okay okay so we will move to the next problem please read the problem and you can keep your response in the chat box after that we will discuss it together Okay, I got response from the Praveen. I'm waiting for others. Okay, so uh, let's discuss it together. So, which of the following regions correspond to the 
shrinkage pattern allowance so it is the problem from the uh, casting method so in casting what we do we take we take a material we melt it and we melt it little higher from its melting point which is called the superheat and we pour the molten material superheated molten material inside the mold in order to make desired shape so when material starts cooling then it goes through the different different zones so this is the suppose pouring temperature okay i am calling it t pouring so it is here this is the melting point this is called the t melting melting temperature okay so when we pour the material it has little higher temperature than the melting temperature this is called the superheat when material cools down so what happens here material remains in the liquid state okay and in this region transformation from liquid to solid takes place liquid to solid and but here in this region temperature is constant and here cooling of solid takes place okay so what happens to the volume during this whole process so when when material cools down within the liquid state so basically when temperature falls from here to here then there is very minimal change of volume takes place so based on the coefficient of thermal expansion a very minimal small amount of volume shrinkage takes place in this region and when further on further cooling the material the phase transformation takes place from liquid to the solid here major volumetric change volumetric shrinkage takes place as well as when after the solidification when material cools down to the room temperature then also volumetric shrinkage will takes place so if i am saying the volumetric shrinkage will takes place from a to t in all the process the volumetric shrinkage will keep on taking place but there are different methods to overcome this volumetric shrinkage so till here till the solidification process ends in these regions in this region volumetric shrinkage is taken care by riser okay if you remember what was the purpose of the riser the riser purpose was to keep on supplying the molten material to compensate the volumetric shrinkage during the solidification of the metal so shrinkage in this region is taken care by riser but the shrinkage which takes case which which takes place after the solidification that is that cannot be taken care by the riser so that has to be done by giving allowance to the pattern basically we some extra amount of um, size some extra amount of size of patterns pattern size is given based on the different material that is called the pattern allowance and because of this extra size when material cools down af after removing the pattern and filling the mold after the solidification after shrinkage we will get the actual size so this is the reason where shrinkage of volume is taken care by giving pattern allowance okay so correct answer for this problem is c to t c option okay is it clear 
any doubt okay so let's move to the next problem please read the problem and first of all please give your response to the chat box after that we will discuss it together yes i think all of you are correct so which of the following is the most important consideration in the casting so in casting as i told our main aim is to melt the material and pour it inside a mold of desired shape to get the uh, to get the product which we intend to okay so since here we are we want to melt the material so melting temperature of the workpiece is important as well as the mold material so if melting temperature will be lower it will be easier to cast and mold material we want the mold should be rigid it should not melt down when we pour the molten metal that's why the melting point of mold material should be higher now coming to the solubility and the chemical reaction between the job and the mold material yes uh, basically uh, there are uh, different alloying element as well as the uh, air which has different solubility at different different temperature in different different material and because of which we get different kind of defects so that depends upon the uh, solubility difference in the material at different different temperatures so solubility as well as this chemical reaction between job and material these are important because of keeping the defect point of view so these are responsible for the defect creation that's why this is also important this is also important and thermal properties of course it is important because uh, you uh, you might remember that the directional solidification so that was coming because of the conductivity of the um, mold material as well as the material which we are melting so all these are important with respect to the casting therefore the correct answer is all of above so already all of you have given the right answer so we will move to the next problem please read the problem and uh, first first of all please try it by yourself after after that i will quickly discuss the solution
yes i have got uh, two responses so okay so i will uh, quickly uh, discuss the solution you can match your answer okay so here what has been given what has been asked calculate the volume of the mold and the height of the mold for the given condition okay so uh, volume of mold is nothing but so volume of the mold it is nothing but time which is required to fill the mold area of the gate and the velocity of the molten metal at the gate so uh, what is the here uh, what is the velocity near the gate or the uh, down sprue so that is given by which is nothing but root 2 gh and here i am telling that you have to take the g 9.81 meter per second square so if we substitute the value we will get 2 into 9.81 to 0.15 so height is 0.15 this is the g and this is the 2 coming from the formula if you solve it you will get velocity 1.71 meter per seconds and now if we calculate the volume we substitute the vg in this formula okay and other things are given cross sectional area that is the ag it is given and time is also given so volume of the mold will be given by time was 50 seconds and area of the gate is 1 into 10 to the power minus 3 and velocity at the gate is 0. Point, oh sorry 1.17 1.71 meters per second if you solve it you will get 0. 0.086 meter cube now what how how our mold is looking like it is something like frustum of a cone where it has the diameter at the top is diameter at the bottom is 0.15 meters and and the radius sorry radius at the top is 0.3 mm 0.3 meter here radius we have bottom 0.15 meters and the volume is volume of frustum of cone is given by pi r square plus multiplication of radius at the top and the bottom times height I three. So R is the radius at the top. Any small R is the radius at the bottom. And now this volume should be equal to the volume which we have calculated over here okay now if we equate it then what we will get we will get 0.086 is equals to pi and now we will substitute all the values plus times h by 3 if you solve it the h you will get 0 0.524 meters so correct answer is 
the volume is 0.086 meter cube and height is 0.0524 meter so i think this b okay so i think a uh, few of you have already got the correct answer so if there is no doubt we can move to the next problem or if you have doubt you can ask me okay since there is no doubt so we will quickly move to the next problem okay yes so please first of all try it by yourself you can take two three minutes to first of all attempt by yourself after that we will discuss it together It is a very standard problem so it will be easier if you could be if you can practice here once more it will be helpful for during the examination Yeah, I have got response from Nagasil Nivas. I am waiting for others. This problem is little lengthy, so you can take little more time. Okay. Okay, so uh, let's solve it together and 
you can in you can check your answer okay so here what we have to find out determine the solidification time of the slab shaped casting of cast iron having thickness of 28 centimeter when it is poured with no superheats into sand mold at initial temperature of 28 degrees celsius and other data is given so uh, for cast iron this is the freezing temperature as well as latent heat density similarly for the mold material also we have given the specific heat and conductivity as well as the density so uh, so for the slab slab type of casting so there is an assumption like uh, how if you see the slab shape it is something like this okay so it is length it is breadth and this is the thickness okay and here it is given the thickness is 28 centimeters and the solidification time is always depends upon the volume by area ratio okay so if it what is the surface area for this kind of slab this will be nothing but two times of length into breadth plus breadth into height plus length into height but there is one assumption involved assumption is involved in this kind of slab problem which has been taught in the lecture so length and breadth they are much much larger than the thickness okay so here thickness is nothing but t here and in this formula h h is the thickness okay so it will be better if we write right t here okay so if after applying the assumption what we will get surface area is equals to two times of length into breadth and what is the volume of this cuboidal shape that will be nothing but length time breadth time into t or here also so and into p and now if you calculate the what is the ratio of the volume by surface area what we will get lbh divided by two times l into b so we will go l will go away now we will left with the h by 2 so here h by 2 is nothing 28 by 2 that is 14 centimeter that is uh, 14 centimeter and here one more condition is given no superheat okay so for the no superheat case we have to find out the effect of the latent heat and this is the relation you might have seen in the lecture so if if we want to see the effect of the superheat on the latent heat then this relation is given okay where cm is nothing but a specific heat capacity of the material so it is a specific heat capacity of metal and theta p is the pouring temperature 
and theta f is the freezing temperature. Since we are pouring the metal with no superheat, it means theta p and theta f are equal. Okay, so in that case, L dash will equals to L, which is given two seventy two kilojoule per kg. Okay, and now what we have to find out. In order, if you want to calculate the time, then before that we have to find out this lambda, and this lambda is given by theta f minus theta a ambient rho c divided by l s again. Theta F already you know this is the freezing temperature and theta naught is the ambient temperature. It is nothing but twenty eight degrees Celsius. Rho is the density of the sand, molding sand. C is the heat capacity of the sand rho m is the density of the metal and l dash is the specific latent heat of metal okay let me add few more slides Okay, so now we will substitute the values to find out the lambda. Fourteen hundred is the density of the sand, and specific heat capacity of the sand is yeah one point one seven into ten to the power three divided by. density of the molten metal and latent heat of the metal okay now if you calculate it you will get lambda is equal to something but 1.159 okay Also, there is a relationship between thermal diffusivity diffusivity of the sand mold and solidification time and ratio of the volume. upon area of the casting upon something called beta square okay so this is the final relation which will be used to calculate the solidification time but here till now what is known v by a ratio is known alpha and beta are still we don't know so beta for the given geometry beta for the slab for thin slab it is given by 2 times of lambda Divided by root over pi. This is remember. This is for the thin slab. Okay, and if you put the values, you will get two into one point one five nine divided by root over pi. And if you calculate it, you will get. You will get beta is equal to one point three zero eight. Similarly, alpha alpha is thermal diffusivity.
of Sandborn. Alpha is given by K by rho C. K is the thermal conductivity of the mold. of mold rho is the density of the mold material and c is the specific heat capacity of the mold of mold now we will substitute the values of k rho and c what we will get okay so we will get 0 0.528 into 10 to the power minus 6 meter per meter square per second Now we have got, if you see this relationship, we have alpha, we have beta, we have V by A ratio. Only thing unknown is solidification time. We will substitute everything and we will calculate the solidification time. Okay. So if you rearrange the equation, what you will get? Solidification time is V by A whole square divided by beta square times alpha. If you substitute the values, you will get. So I have put all the values and after solving, you will get solidification time in seconds. Seconds, okay. Now if you calculate it into the minutes, you will get 361 minutes approximately. Okay. So the correct answer will be A. Okay. So here, uh, in this problem so although it is lengthy but uh, you can practice two three times by yourself you can solve it quickly okay so first thing you have to find out the volume by area ratio okay so it is here we have got 14 centimeter okay and after that you have to find out the l dash if superheat is not given l dash is equals to l so l dash was it is the latent heat of fusion of the material and next step is to calculate the lambda okay so after calculating lambda you need to find out alpha and beta alpha and beta so beta can be found out with the help of lambda and alpha you can find out the material properties of the mold material and after that Finally, you have to use this relationship okay, to find out the solidification time. And don't remember, uh, please remember, you have to put everything in the SI. Then you can get the answer in uh, SI and you can quickly convert it into the seconds into the minutes. Okay. So, steps is clear or not? You can practice it by yourself two three times then you can do it by yourself okay okay so we have discussed many more problems so let's quickly move to the next problem now let's come to the machining so please try it by yourself first after that we will discuss it together okay
Okay, I got response from the Praveen. I'm waiting for others. Yes, Praveen. Hello. Yes, your hand is raised. Yes. yes Sir, uh, last uh, last week I have discussed yes, yes, uh, yes. some doubts. Yes, 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 yes. I have forwarded uh, the doubt on the um, next day, and uh, uh, I have got uh, email from them that uh, re-evaluation of assignment uh, as well as the uh, remarking will happen soon but uh, till now i don't know whether it has been showing on the portal or not so i got response from the team that they have assured that uh, all the problems will be re-evaluated and uh, it will be updated on the portal so is it those problems has been solved or not till date no no sir no updated not updated it, it is still not updated in the portal Yes, sir. Okay. And one more thing, sir, because they are replying now, because question will be error, question solution error, it will be not evaluated like this. They are telling. It means they are going to give bonus. No, not bonus. It means that will be uh, not, so total marks will be reduced. It will not be bonus. So that question will be omitted. It means earlier mm -hmm. if you are be you have been evaluated within the 10 and suppose one problem is removed then you will be evaluated in the nine everyone will be evaluated in the nine yeah but uh, option is right now then why they are going to evaluate actually so i also don't know means why they have done they are so uh, that, that the information common, if you see the uh, check what this other video they have solved so many two three questions solved on the same formula then how yes, they yes, are yes. Them? yes, yes. So basically, if option is there and uh, it should not become bonus question, it should. So only those people will get awarded who have yeah, given yeah. their right answer. Yes. Okay. I will again raise the same issue to the team yes. and yeah, hopefully, please, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Definitely, I will do that. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay. So don't worry. Even if. Uh, one or two questions will not make much difference in your overall grades. So, but still, I will I will make sure that uh, all the, your problems get resolved. Okay, I will again write. Okay. Yeah, I know, sir. But uh, theoretically, it is right. Then uh, yes, 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 it, yes. It is, <laughs> I agree. It is I agree. I agree. I agree, and I will make sure that this problem gets solved. Okay. 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 Sell. Uh, Okay, I can see some response. Yes, I think most of you already have got the correct answer. So uh, I will also solve it quickly. So this problem is all about the orthogonal cutting operation. The tool rectangle is 15 and chip thickness before cut is 0.2 mm and the cut yields deformed chip thickness 0.6 mm. What are the shear plane angles and the shear strain for the current machining operation? Yes. So, uh, already we have seen this kind of relation that 10 phi is equals to nothing but, sorry, phi, where phi is the shear plane angle. Ten phi is equals to cos of alpha divided by t2 by t1 minus sine of alpha where alpha is the rectangle it is given 15 degrees and t2 is the chip thickness after cut that is given 0 0.6 mm and t1 is the chip thickness uncut chip thickness so cut chip thickness
and T1 is the uncut chip thickness. So it is given 0 0.3, oh sorry, 0 0.2. Okay, and now if you substitute everything in this formula, what we will get? 10 phi is equals to cos 15 degree divided by 0 0.6 by 0 0.2 minus sin 15 degree. It will come out. 0 0.352 and you calculate the 5, 5 will equal to 19.41 degrees. This is the shear plane angle. And now what is the shear strain? Shear strain, shear strain is nothing but tan phi minus alpha plus cot phi and here we are already we know the phi is and alpha is given so we will put the values 10 19.41 minus 15 degree plus cos sorry sorry cot thank you cot phi 19.41 degree and after solving we will get 2.915 this is the shear strain which will be which we will this is the shear strain induced during the plastic deformation of the material during the formation of the chip so correct answer is 5 19.41 and gamma strain 2.915 Yes, correct. Yes, already, all, already you have got the correct answer. So let's quickly move to the next problem. Yes, so this is also related to the machining operation. So this is from the tool, Taylor's tool life equation. Please, first of all, try it by yourself. After that, I will discuss the solution. Yes, I got response from the Praveen of this. Yes, 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 all of you are correct. So I will quickly so, uh, provide the solution. So, if the tool life of a tool life has to be increased by three times, then according to Taylor, Taylor's tool life equation, where n is given by this, and the cutting speed will be. So we need to find out the cutting speed. Okay. Yes, I think all of you have got the right answer. So coming to the Taylor's tool life, it is nothing but v to the v into t to the power n is equals to some constant where v is the cutting velocity and t is the tool life and n and c are the constant so uh, let's assume that v1 is the initial cutting speed P2 is the final cutting speed T1 
T1 is the initial to live. T2 is the new to live. So here to life it is given that to life has to be increased three times so new to life will be three times of to life of initial to life okay so and what else is given n is given 0 0.693 now we will write this equation for initial condition as well as the final condition and since both should be constant so they will be equal so v1 t1 to the power n should be equals to v2 t to the power n okay so now if you rearrange it what you will get v2 by v1 should be equals to t1 divided by new time is three times of t1 to the power n n is nothing but 0 0.693 and if you solve it what you will get v2 is equals to 0 0.467 v1 so the correct answer is this one okay so it was simple only so already already you have given the correct answer so we will move to the next problem yes now coming to the welding problem so this is the standard problem so please take some time to solve it and you can give your response in the chat box after that we will discuss it together Okay, I have got from the Rohit. As others, you can take some more time to solve it.
yes yes so i think yeah, all of you are on the correct path and whoever have been given the answer they are correct so i will quickly go through the solution of this problem so first of all let's see what has been asked in the problem a direct current building machine with linear power source characteristics provides an open circuit voltage of 75 volts and short circuit current of 750 mps so during the building the machine the measured r current so r current corresponding to 6.5 mm is 850 ampere and r current corresponding to arc length of 4.5 mm is 450 mps and this relationship it is given linear so what we need to find out we need to find out the voltage and length characteristics of welding arc okay so first of all uh, let's see what information we can get from the power source characteristics okay so from power source characteristics one thing what is given that the it is linear in nature linear power source okay so there should be some relationship between the voltage and the current which should be in linear so that we can keep by v is equal to a plus p i where v is the voltage i is the current and a and b are the constant so first information which is given it is open circuit voltage so it is 75 volts when circuit is open at that point of time what will be the current i should be zero there should be no current similarly what information what else information is given short circuit current short circuit current that is given 750 mps it means during the time of short circuit what should be the voltage voltage should be zero now we have given two conditions open circuit voltage short circuit voltage from here we need we have to find out this re relationship okay so first we will put putting first condition open circuit voltage so here okay so we will put first short circuit voltage then it will be easier short circuit current okay that is here from the first first condition open circuit voltage we will put voltage equals to 75 volts we should be equals to constant a plus current is zero so this term will be zero directly we will get a is equals to 75 now from the short circuit current what we, what we will get v is equals to zero a already we got the 75 plus p and what is the current which is given 750 mps and if you solve it what we'll get p is equals to minus 1 by 10 now we will substitute a and b in equation let's call it 1 so what we will get p is equals to 75 minus i by 10 so this is the relationship which we will get for the power source i need to add more slides
okay now coming to the uh, arc characteristics okay from arc voltage characteristics we have given the information that there's there is a linear relationship between the voltage arc voltage and arc length so again we will assume similar kind of linear relationship linear relationship v is equals to a plus b here voltage will depend upon the arc length okay and what information we we are given at arc length of 6.5 mm the arc current is 850 amperes and another situation is if arc length is 4 mm then arc current will be 450 amperes okay now from this condition already from the power source what we have got v is equals to 75 minus i by 10 so this voltage and this voltage should be equal okay so now we will substitute this v by from equation 1 so we will get 75 minus i by 10 and now I will put the value length values and current values from the condition 1 okay so a plus pl so that will be nothing but 75 minus i by 10 is equals to let's substitute i here itself So, I should be 850 by 10, A plus B and L is 6.5. So, if we rearrange this equation, what we will get? We will get 75 minus 85 is equals to A plus 6.5 B which is nothing but a plus 6.5 b is equals to minus 10 similarly now we will use second condition we will call this equation 2 now we will use second condition and we will substitute the values we will get Okay, and if we again rearrange it, we will get a plus 4b is equals to 30. Okay, now we have got two linear relationships, we will call this equation 3. We have got two equations 2 and 3 and now we will solve it okay no it should be 30 only because if you solve it what you what you will get 75 minus 450 by 10 you will get 75 minus 45 so it should be 30 only okay so we have two relationships one is the a plus 6.5 b equals to minus 10 and another is a plus 4 b is equals to 30 okay and uh, if you will solve it definitely you will get b is equals to minus 16 and a is equals to 94 and if you put a and b in this relationship 
here you will get the characteristics of the arc so you will get relationship between the arc voltage and arc length so that is given by v is equals to a should be 94 minus 16 l okay so which one was the correct answer yes p okay is it clear if you have doubt it in any step you can ask me otherwise we will move to the next problem okay it seems it it is clear to everyone so let's move to the next problem okay now let's coming to the forming problem so yes please try it by yourself first then quickly i will discuss the solution okay okay so i will start uh, discussing the solution so you can match your answer okay so here if the strength coefficient is 550 megapascal and strain hardening exponent is 0.22 for certain metal forming operation derive the final true strain and flow stress that the metal experience when the average flow stress is 423 megapascals okay so if you see the any typical stress strain curve for a metal so we get something like this relationship okay and this region is called the strain hardening region and here the relationship which works is it is something this this is called the holomon hardening law hardening law okay so where sigma is the flow stress okay okay is the strength coefficient and this is the epsilon is the true strain and n is the strain hardening exponent and here what information we have we have the value of average flow stress and what we have to find out we have to find out uh, strain final true strain and flow stress okay and what is given the strain coefficient is given as well as the strain hardening exponent is also given so average flow stress is nothing but k epsilon to the power n divided by one plus n Okay, so this value is given now we will substitute this 423 megapascal and k also given 
550 megapascals and epsilon is also given uh, sorry epsilon we have to find out n is given that is 0 0.22 and 1 plus n is nothing but 1.22 if you solve it for the epsilon what you will get the true strain value you will get 0 0.748 and now you have to find out the flow stress corresponding to this strain okay so that is given by this Coleman halting law so sigma is equals to k yes Ramjit Ram, Ramjit Sahu. Okay. So now from this relationship, we will find out the what was the flow stress value at this strain. We will substitute the known values 748 to the power 0 0.22. So sigma is nothing but 515.96 megapascals. Okay, strain is 0 0.748, flow stress is 5, 515 megapascals. So which one is the correct? Yes. Okay. So any doubt? Okay, it seems there is no doubt. So we will move to the next problem. So first of all, please try it by yourself and then I will give the answer, okay? others can you please can you please quickly give your answer then i will tell you the correct answer okay so let me show you this diagram now now can you please try to attempt so after seeing this diagram can you Please try to give your response. Okay, so let's see what the problem is saying. Which of the following photoresist do not dissolve to the developer solution when directly exposed by the ultraviolet light? So this problem is from the micro machining part where we we have been taught about the photolithography so what first of all we have some substrate something let's say the silicon wafer okay and what we have applied over the silicon wafer that is something called photoresist photoresist is nothing but it is the material which resists with the sorry which reacts with the light okay so it reacts with the uv light okay so we applied a layer of photoresist over the substrate then we applied some masking region we don't want all the photoresist to react with the UV light. We want only some specific reason. 
that's why we applied some mask over it okay after applying mask we expose the we expose the layer of photo resistance substrate under the uv light and you can see these are the reason where the uv light comes and i already told that photo resistor the material which reacts with the uv light so in this reason photo resist will react and form some compound okay now the compound can be two types either either this compound will be dissolved by this developer layer what we are doing after creating this thing we are putting this whole thing in under a developer solution so why we are doing we want we are applying the developer solution so that we could remove either the reacted part or unreacted part so based on the nature of the photoresist so based on the nature of the photoresist when we apply this developer solution so either reacted part will wash away or unreacted part will wash away if if unreacted part is being washed away by the photo uh, by the developer solution then the photoresist is called negative photoresist and if reacted part is being washed away by the developer solution then that photoresist is called positive photoresist now let's come to the problem which of the following photoresist do not dissolve to the developer solution do not dissolve means do not dissolve means what this so you can see these are the reasons where these were exposed to the uv light and these are not got resolved these are not got dissolved in the developer solution so the correct answer should be negative photoresist okay is it clear okay okay so let's quickly move to the next problem please read the problem and uh, find out the correct answer okay you can give it in the uh, you can write it in the chat box Okay, I have given his response. I am waiting for others. Okay, so let's quickly discuss the solution. So here we have to find out the correct match. So in abrasive water jet machining. Okay, so in a water water jet machining, it is here uh, the material removal takes place because of the because of the impact which is given to the because of the momentum which has been given to the abrasive and water jet. So material removal takes place with the help of loose abrasives which has been which uh, which comes in the form of the jet and it removes the material from the substrate so uh, so especially this pro this method is used 
for the machining of composite material like the carbon fiber reinforced reinforced polymer composites okay so this uh, this method is well known is because the cfrp are if you use any other conventional machining it is not possible because they have a uh, reinforcement material as well as the matrix material so if we try to do it by the using conventional machining or other machining techniques we will not able to machine it so only the abrasive water jet machining is suitable for that so correct match for the option is b coming to the ultrasonic machining in ultrasonic machining you remember you can remember that there was a tool and there was a work piece and we are applying some abrasive slurry abrasive slurry between the tool and the work piece and we are giving some ultrasonic vibration to the tool and material removal was taking place locally with the help of abrasive particles okay and here the tool material which we were using it was ductile in nature because the abrasive particles can remove the material by the brittle fracture okay so here the this ultrasonic machine was used for the brittle brittle work pieces okay like glass or ceramics so the mechanism which was involved in the material removal was the brittle fracture of locally by the abrasive particles but we don't want to material removal from the tool therefore we were using the ductile material okay so for the ultrasonic machine the correct option should be tool material should be ductile coming to the electrochemical machining so electrochemical machining we uh, we were using tool as a cathode material and it has exact uh, counter replica of the shape which we want to make and there was a constant gap between the anode and the cathode and the workpiece was not coming directly to the contact of the tool there was a flow of electrolyte happening between the uh, tool and the workpiece therefore there was no mechanical contact between the tool and the workpiece so no tool wear was happening so material removal in the electrochemical machining takes place by electrochemical reactions from the workpiece and the electrolyte okay so job of the tool is to maintain the voltage difference okay so the correct answer for electrochemical machining is no tool wear and electro discharge machining the material removal was taken place by the spark or discharge because of spark locally material was melting and it was getting removed because of the shock wave produced just after the discharge so here is due because of the spark material is melting that's why it is a thermal process so correct answer is c okay any confusion okay seems it is clear so we will move to the next problem okay please read the problem and try to find out the correct answer and after that i will discuss the solution
yes yes uh, abhay has given the correct answer so yes i will now to provide the solution of this problem so it is all about the electro discharge machining in electric discharge machining if applied voltage is 220 volt and discharge voltage is 140 volt find the pulse cycle time when resistance is 25 milli ohm and capacitance is 15 millifarad of the in the circuit okay so if you remember um, how the circuit of EDM was it was something like this so it is RC relaxation circuit with the help of this circuit we were trying to machine the we, we are trying to create the pulse electric sparks okay this was our this was capacitance and this was the uh, voltage which has been applied and here something we had discharge voltage okay so everything is given here so r is given 25 into 10 to the power minus 3 ohm so it is the resistance of the relaxation circuit and see is the capacitance that is 15 into 10 to the power minus 3 faraday capacitance of relaxation circuit V0 is given 220 volts and VD is the discharge voltage which is given 140 volts. So if you remember this relationship between the charging time which is also equal to the cycle time. So pulse cycle time. It is nothing but TC is equal to RC natural log of V0 divided by V0 minus VD. Now if you substitute the values, we will get Okay. So after calculating, you will get TC is equal to 0 0.000379 seconds or 0 0.379 milliseconds okay so the correct answer is d okay, is it clear if you have any doubt please ask me okay okay so we are uh, moving to the next problem so this is also simple one please try it by yourself you can give your response in the chat box after that we will discuss it together okay Okay, I have got response from the Abhay. Others?
okay so we will quickly discuss it together okay so what has been given here determine the volume removal rate for machining pure magnesium if current required is 5.5 kilo ampere and atomic weight is 25 24 grams and valence is 2 and density is 1.73 gram per centimeter cube okay so what was the relationship for the volume removal rate so volume removal rate in ECM Q so it was directly proportional to the current it was inversely proportional to the uh, valency and there was some constant also okay so let's write it so the relationship was something like this okay so this relationship comes from the faraday's laws okay so where a is atomic weight in grams i is the current in mps rho is the density of the material z is nothing but valency and f is the radius constant that is nothing but 96500 so now using the relationship we will get q is equals to and what should be the unit unit which we will get is in centimeter cube per minute if you want this unit then We have to substitute the values and we have to multiply by 60 because here we are getting minute so 1.73 density times valency times Faraday's constant and if you will solve it you can directly get 23.72 centimeter cube per minute okay so this is the volume removal rate of the material and the correct option is c any doubt okay it seems it is clear to everyone so let's move with the last problem of the day so please uh, find out the suitable match you can give your response in the chat box after that i will discuss it together okay yes i have given option b others what do you think which would be the correct answer okay okay so quickly discuss it together yes yes so, so first uh, first process is the imb in machining so in imb machining the the high velocity ions are being produced and the high velocity ions they were hitting the material and they were removing the material by transferring the momentum okay and this that process is called 
sputtering process so first first match first will match with a c now coming to the electron wave machining here high velocity of electrons is being produced and that high velocity electron beam is directed towards the metallic work piece and the kinetic energy of those high momentum electrons is being converted to the thermal energy by which the workpiece material is locally getting uh, melted and sometimes they also get evaporated also so here basically the kinetic energy of electron is responsible for the production of the heat now let's come to the laser machining so laser machining it is uh, if you remember uh, we have shown a curve between the power density and a spot radius so that curve was something like this so power density or energy density and spot radius so based on this curve we were getting different different zones first at the top we we were having edm process and just after the edm we were having the laser process and for the electron beam machining we were having a big spectrum so this was the ebm and here we have welding process or the arc welding arc and here we had oxyacetylene flame or the gas welding so you can see the laser and electron be uh, electro discharge machining they were at the higher side of the power density and that's why they are coming under the Howard high density processes and now coming to the fuel deposition modeling yes it was uh, additive manufacturing technique where uh, a wire of polymer it is uh, melted locally and it was getting deposited layer by layer in order to form them or in order to manufacture the required component so here layer by layer material is deposited in order to manufacture the final product so it is a additive manufacturing process now let's see which is the correct match first c second a third d fourth b yes option b is the correct so i think it is clear to everyone okay so this was all for the today so i have tried to cover so different type of problems based on the all the uh, all the weeks syllabus so based on the complete syllabus i have tried to solve the problem and provide you make you practice so that you do don't find much difficulty during the final examination so i think all of you are all you have done a very fantastic job and you have studied the course well so wish you all the best for your final examination so thank you so if you have any more doubts you can uh, you can ask me okay thank you thank you everyone okay so wish you all the best for your examination thank you so much we will end the session here okay bye bye good night thank you everyone